Good morning, YouTubers. Well, I'm back from all my travels. Been gone for the better part of two months, so it's time to get back in the swing of things. I need to make some more nitric acid so I can uh, refine some more gold. So I am set up this fine morning to make some nitric acid with uh, my new and improved nitric acid production setup, and I'll walk you through it here in a minute. Um, it's good to be back. I was, uh, I drove across country four times in two months, so I'm tired of driving, so hopefully I can fly next time. Went out to my place in Arizona, went out to our Wyoming ranch a couple of times. Um, I'll put some links to my travels up here in the corner and in the description of the video. Um, uh, got an observatory at our Wyoming ranch. I spent a long time uh, working on that and got it up and running good. Um, we went fossil hunting in Nebraska, and that's always fun. We try to do that every year. And that was that was just a grand old time going fossil hunting in Nebraska. I, I love it. I wish I could do that all the time. So back from my travels. First thing I did when I got back was repaint my workbench. It was way overdue for its annual repainting. So I've covered up all of the scorch marks and the stains from spills and gouges and whatnot. And it, and it looks good again. In fact, it looks so good, I decided I'm going to work on some cardboard today. I don't want to mess it up so soon. In case I spill some of the nitric acid or some of the oil in the oil bath. Anyway, let me walk you through my setup. Um, what I'm doing a little differently these days is I have a two neck, two liter flask here. And what I found with, with uh, making my nitric acid is with a two liter flask, I can get at least four charges of reactants in it um, and make a good deal of nitric acid. But the problem is I have to wait for it to cool down between putting charges in so I can take it apart so I don't get a huge cloud of nitrogen dioxide in the face and all. And it's like, ugh, it's too much of a pain. So, and of course the glassware is hot, it's all wrapped in aluminum foil, I have to undo that, I have to wear, you know, it's just getting to be a real pain. So I thought, well, I'll get a double neck flask. And when the first charge of reactant stops working, yeah, I'll get a little nitrogen dioxide out, but uh, um, I can just dump another charge in really easily and get the reaction going again. I don't have to wait for the oil to cool down and then heat up again. Um, and, and we'll just keep this rolling. So it's the, the flask is in an oil bath. Yeah, you really can't see the oil level down there in this lighting, but it's probably right about here. And I'm not going to put any more oil in it for now because my experience is as the oil heats up, it'll expand and the level will rise. And if I put too much in, it's going to overflow and get on the burner and get really smoky and nasty. So I'm going to keep it down here for now um, and see where it expands to. I may add a little more to it, but uh, I may not need to. We'll see. Now the reason I'm using a two liter flask here is because even though I'm gonna be adding the uh, reactants in small increments, it does tend to get foamy at a certain stage of the reaction. The reaction will start off slow, kind of build up, build up, build up, and then almost without warning, whoosh, it just takes off and it gets really foamy. And I have found I need the big flask and small um, doses of reactants to, uh, to make this work without it foaming out of the neck of the flask. So hopefully I should be able to get four, five, maybe even six doses of reactants in there over the course of the day. Yeah, or the next few hours anyway. It should go pretty quickly since I'm not, you know, killing the heat on it between dosing. So this should actually go pretty quick. So four, five, six, maybe before the level of, of uh, stuff in the flask gets so high, I'll be worried about it foaming over. So we'll see how it goes. Here's my nitric acid bottle down here that I normally store the stuff in. Brown nitric acid bottle with a ground glass lid, which is sitting back there. Um, it holds about a liter of nitric acid, and I'm hoping to uh, basically fill it up. And if... I can get any more out, I'll, I'll substitute this flask for it, and we'll, we'll, we'll get the overflow. Um, 
anyway, the uh, nitric acid is I used to I used to dilute it to the 68% azeotrope, but I stopped doing that just because it's kind of a pain. Um, so I'm just going to take it straight, whatever it comes out of the still. It'll be really, really strong. I mean, set your gloves on fire strong. But it's not going to be pure nitric acid because, you know, the reactants, they aren't perfectly dry. There's going to be some water in there. So I'm just probably 97, 96% nitric acid. Maybe not even quite that strong, but still really potent stuff. Much more potent than the azeotrope. I have to cut back on the amount I'm using. Uh, when I'm refining gold, otherwise I overknox things. So my bottle's almost empty, so I want to refill it. And you can see, I don't know if it's showing up, but a little bit of the nitrogen di dioxide fumes from the bottle are backing up through the condenser there. Uh, speaking of the condenser, um, I've got it uh, plumbed in with some ice water down here in this cooler. There's a little 12-volt um, pump down there that's going to circulate the liquid. And we should get, hopefully, a pretty darn good yield of nitric acid out of this setup. It's worked for me in the past. The only difference is I have changed from a single neck flask to a double neck flask. So everything should work pretty darn good. So let me measure out the first batch of reactants. I'll show you what I'm using and how much. So if you want to if you want to play along at home, you can. Although I have to give the usual disclaimer. This is very dangerous. Don't try this at home. But I know you're gonna. So, you know you can follow along. So let me get the camera up on the tripod and I'll start measuring out uh, the first batch of reactants and I'll show you what it is. So the recipe for nitric acid the way I make it is pretty darn simple. We've got two ingredients. We got uh, sodium nitrate back here and we got sulfuric acid and I'm gonna load them in uh, the flask over there and crank the heat up on it and we should start distilling over nitric acid pretty quickly. So what's the recipe? Well, we're going to put in 185 grams of sodium nitrate krills. Oh, they're, I'm going to have to bust those up. They're a little, a little chunky there. Oh, 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 a little more, a little more. 180. Oh, too much. Overshot. The scale is not all that precise, but so 185 is what I wanted. I don't know if it'll. Yeah. We can't decide between 180 and 190, so we'll call that a we'll call that 185. What the heck? So 185 grams roughly. It's this is not you know doesn't have to be super accurate. 185 grams roughly of uh, sodium nitrate and we close this up so it doesn't absorb a lot of moisture from the air. It's already kind of clumpy. Absorbs a lot of moisture. It'll get clumpier. And then and then we want 100 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. This is sulfuric acid drain opener. I buy it at the hardware store. It's also available lots of other places, at least in the US. I can't speak for other countries, but in the US it's fairly common, easy to find. So I want 100 milliliters of this stuff. And like I said, we're going to do multiple charges of this. This is not all of it. I'm going to do, do this four, five, six times just to avoid foam over in the beaker or in the just to avoid foam over in the big flask because this will get foamy at one point in the reaction. All right, let's see if we can get this stuff through the funnel. It's a little bit chunky. I've busted up the bigger chunks. Hopefully it won't clog the funnel. There. The uh, sodium nitrate is in. Add the sulfuric acid carefully.
Sorry, my arm is probably blocking the view. I should be doing this with my right hand so that you can see what I'm doing. Sometimes I forget I'm on camera. Okay, so we're ready to go. I'm going to turn the heat on, on my hot plate here, up to high. I'm not going to start the fluid flowing through the condenser yet. I've got some other things to do. I need to wrap all this in aluminum foil just to hold the heat in so we get uh, a, better, a better reaction. Because all this is, you know, exposed to the, the outside air and it's going to cool down. There's going to be a whole lot of... The, the, the nitric acid that it forms is just going to reflux on the inside of the, of the flask and up here and drip right back down in unless I can keep all this warm enough for it to come across as a vapor into the condenser. So I'm going to get this all wrapped with aluminum foil. I also need to uh, wash out this beaker since uh, it's, it's like a little time bomb sitting there. You know, I'll grab it without thinking, but it's got, it's got concentrated sulfuric acid residue in it. So I will do that and be right back. All right, I've got it all wrapped in aluminum foil, loosely. I don't want it tightly wrapped. I want to swarm like a, a tent around it with an air gap that will hold in the heat coming up off the hot oil bath down there. And I left myself a little peaky hole down here where I can see what's going on in the flask to see how badly it's foaming up. So I will be able to see if that's becoming a problem. And I'll just have to peel back this top layer to get it the uh, second neck to add the next uh, few batches of reactants. So I think that's that's going to work pretty well. I uh, still got the thermometer poking out the top so I can see what temperature we're running at. And uh, let's see, well, if I remember correctly, the boiling point of nitric acid I think is 86C. So, you know, once we're running around there, we're going to be producing you know, some good nitric acid. So, all right, let me get the, uh, get the pump running for the condenser. There we go. Beautiful. It's been a few minutes. Things are starting to heat up. You can start to see a reaction starting to take off inside the flask. I peeled some of the aluminum foil back to get a look. So we should be starting to see some nitric acid come over pretty soon. Got to warm up some more. The reaction's got to pick up steam. But uh, I put the aluminum foil back on and let it continue warming up. I am starting to see the first drops of nitric acid come over. There, yeah, got some brown fumage forming up here in the top of the condenser. Yeah, I can see liquid condensed. Coming over really nicely now. Can't really see inside the bottle. That's nice. So it'll probably take about 10 or 15 minutes to run through this first charge of reactants and then I'll put in a second charge. And we'll just keep the good times rolling. Making nitric acid cheaper than I can buy it because these reactants, they are really cheap. They don't cost much at all. I'll try and do a cost breakdown. Maybe put it in the description. Well, it's not showing up on the camera very well, but I'm looking through my little peaky hole into the uh, into the flask, and uh, it got a little foamy in there, but you no, know, no danger of foaming over because I'm using such a big flask. Um, let's see here. Thermometer is going to show up. 
we are right around the boiling point of nitric acid. So things are working really well. It is condensing primarily in the upper part of the condenser, so the condenser is cool enough. Not getting a lot of brown fumes down here in the lower part of the condenser. The acid is coming over fast and furious now. We've reached the foam up stage inside the, the flask. The reactant has really taken off now. The liquid is just, it's just coming over super fast. It's condensing all the way down to about two-thirds down the condenser. Whereas before it was just condensing in the upper section. Let's see if we can get a peek inside the flask. Oh yeah. I think we're at the tail end of foam up. I think it was higher than that before considering how fast it's coming over. So the first batch of reactants is almost used up. Once the foamage, once the foamage happens, we're getting close to the end, and as you can see, it's already starting to slow down. It'll uh, slow down pretty precipitously here in a little bit, and then uh, once it does, it'll be time to add the second batch of reactants. So my brown black glass bottle only had a little bit left in the bottom of it. So after the first batch of reactants is almost done, we're up to there. So that's pretty good. It's uh, not quite a quarter full now. It'll probably be close to a quarter full by the time uh, this first batch is exhausted. Well the rate that the drops is coming across has slowed down quite a bit. The temperature, if I can get it to show up again, come on, has risen above 100 C. So, that first batch of reactants is pretty much done. So I'm going to get a second batch ready, exact same amounts as last time. And um, we'll put it in through the, the side neck of the flask. Okay, here goes the next batch of reactants. We'll see how uh, how this goes. Probably get some uh, nitro nitrogen dioxide fumes out the side arm, but it doesn't look too bad in there actually. I will stand way back as I open this up. Now that. Uh, That stopper is covered with sulfuric acid and nitric acids, and it's hot, too. That will put a hurting on you if you get it on you. You definitely have to wear good gloves. Uh-oh, when you're doing this, you got a little clog. There we go. Gloves that are not going to burst into flames if they get hit with hot acid. You know, nitric acid itself is pretty bad. But a hot mixture of nitrogen and sulfuric, well, that's just terrible stuff. Okay, there we go. Kept clogging up, so I had to pour it in pretty slowly, but it's all in. Here goes the acid. I'm going to pour it in slowly, too, because the glassware is hot, the acid's cold. I don't want to crack anything. Okay, stop it up, put the, uh, oh, it's already bubbling pretty hard in there. I don't know if that's showing up. Let me grab the camera and get it a little closer. Yeah, the reaction's starting up again. Nice. All right, let me get the aluminum foil back on, and we should start getting some more uh, acid coming over pretty darn quick. Well, it's been maybe two, three minutes since I filmed that last segment. Just enough time to get the aluminum foil back on and clean out the acid beaker and dry it. And got a whole lot... It's coming over across really fast again. whole lot of acid coming over. Nice. Everything's nice and hot, so uh, it took off again really quickly. And the thermometer... Boy, it's really hard to see. It doesn't want to focus on it. It doesn't want to... 
Well, take my word for it. The thermometer's back down to uh, the boiling point of nitric acid. So everything is just working swimmingly. So I'm just going to keep this up uh, the rest of the morning. Just got the third batch of reactants in, and wow, it, it's it's coming over really fast again. It, it it's slowed down to a drip every couple of seconds, and uh, boy, it's it's been like two minutes since I got this the third batch in, and it's already sped up to this, and it's going to come over faster here shortly. So we're doing good. This is going pretty quick. Not having to uh, let things cool down a little between uh, putting in batches of reactants, you know, and then having to wait for it to heat up again. That's that's really speeding things up. Love this new double neck uh, boiling flask. So we're in the middle of the third batch of reactants, and we've passed the halfway point on my half liter bottle here. I think we're quite a ways past halfway. I don't want to fill it too high. Got to leave a little air space in there. So the next batch may be it for this. We'll see. Fourth batch of reactants is in. And we're cooking away over here, so that's good. And I'm just going to let it go. So, you know, I can uh, just let this go and come back and check on it periodically, see what the temperature is, see how much, how fast the drops are coming over. Oh, well, they're picking up speed here. And, uh, you know, when the temperature goes up and the drops slow down, it's just time to put in another batch. Um, I'm keeping an eye on the level of stuff in the flask, and it's not too bad yet. I'll give you a peek probably the next time I put stuff in. I just... Wrap some more aluminum foil around it to keep the heat in, so I'm not going to unwrap it right now. But things are going good. So I can just let this run and go take care of other things and come over and check on it periodically. Easy peasy. Now I better batten down that aluminum foil. The wind's going to blow it away. Just put in the fifth batch of reactants, and the reaction's picking up again. The bottle is almost full enough that I will switch over to the other other flask soon because I want to leave an airspace in there because this stuff builds up pressure as it uh, slowly decomposes so I don't want it to uh, wind up squirting out at me if it builds up some pressure All right, we're getting towards the end of the fifth batch of reactants. I normally don't like to fill the bottle higher than where it starts to round over up here. And I'm calling that half a liter, which is, you know, it's about right, you know, because I'm putting in about 100 milliliters of acid in each, of sulfuric acid in each batch, and now I've got about 500 milliliters of nitric acid here. So I'm going to, I'm gonna let this settle down a little more. The drops are still coming over pretty fast. I'm going to let this slow down on this fifth batch and then I will real quick swap out flasks. I'll put in this flask in place of the jar and uh, I'll see if I can get a sixth and maybe even a seventh batch through although the weather's deteriorating. We got thunderstorms coming in. It's just a little afternoon. I started this like 9 30 this morning. It's just a little afternoon and it looks like we got thunderstorms coming in so I may have to abort this early if the weather gets too rough but I would like to make a little more acid since I'm all set up for it so I will swap out bottles I'll show you that after it happens so 
six. The batch of reactants is in. Uh, I think I hear distant thunder rumbling. So this might be the last batch because I've got to let this stuff cool down a bit and then start cleaning it up. Um, I'll get the cleanup stuff ready to go just in case I have to stop it after this, but I would like to get one more batch through if I can. Just uh, make up some more acid. Boy, it's, it's, this is a 250 milliliter flask. It is filling up quick. So, this is going to be a big batch of acid. And remember, this is almost 100% acid. If I was to dilute it to the 68% azeotrope, which is the way you usually buy it, the volume would be a whole lot more still. So this is a lot of acid. So we're coming to the end of the sixth batch of reactants. Got a lot of acid out of that batch. Um, there's still some reaction going on. Acid's still coming across. It yeah, slowing down quite a bit. So the question is, can I get another batch in there? Number one, without foaming up into the necks of the flask, and number two, before the thunderstorms arrive. Well, I just looked at the weather radar, and the thunderstorms are probably an hour, an hour and a half away. So I think I'm going to go for it. I think I'm going to do one more batch, and then just cook this until it basically stops producing and then call it and uh, start to clean up. I've, I've already got my uh, tub of cleanup water over here. It's got a lot of uh, um, a lot of baking soda dissolved in it. So I will just you know glove up really well and carefully disassemble the glassware and dump it all in here so that the acid will be neutralized and then once the big beaker cools down enough, I will pour this liquid, after I get all the glassware out of it, of course, I will pour this liquid in the big beaker. Once it cools down enough, I can do it without worrying about cracking it or having a steam explosion. And it will neutralize the slug of sodium bisulfate that's forming in the bottom of that beaker and dissolve it. And I have found that's the best way to get it out of the beaker. And it's, it's fairly quick and easy. So I am gonna I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna do one more batch of reactants and then call it and start cleaning up once uh, once it stops producing acid. All right, seventh and last batch of reactants is in. Whatever we get, that's what we're gonna get. So I'm just gonna run this to completion. I call completion when it's like five seconds between drops or so. I can just turn off the heat and let it start to cool down and then I can disassemble the glassware once the drops get really intermittent and start cleaning up. But uh, it's coming across really good now. This is going to make a lot of acid. I think we're going to have close to three quarters of a liter of nearly straight nitric acid. So that's a lot of acid. That'll last me for quite a while the way I use it. So this is uh, great for not not bad for a morning, part of a morning's and part of an afternoon's work. Even if thunderstorms weren't coming, this was going to have to be the last batch anyway because uh, all my ice has melted. And the water, oh, it's still pretty darn cold, but it's going to start warming up here. So, extracting a lot of heat from the stuff in that condenser. So, I'm uh, going to start losing efficiency in the condenser. So, this is definitely going to be the last batch. Yeah, that line of thunderstorms getting closer to me. It'll be hitting the beaches soon, and I'm only a few miles inland. So, 
I'm going to have to wrap this up pretty soon. But fortunately, it's almost done. All right, seventh and last batch is coming to the nearing the end. The, the drops are getting slower and further apart. Got a lot of acid. I'm going to call it three quarters of a liter. So if I were to dilute this to the 68% azeotrope, I'd have over a liter, well over a liter of liquid here. So not bad for a few hours work, I don't think, and not very expensive either. All right, it's about time to call it. I'm going to turn the heat off. The drops are coming over pretty darn slowly. Of course, as I say that, we get a pulse of fast ones through, but yeah, they're coming pretty slowly now. And I'm going to let this cool down. Getting a lot of orange fumes coming through too. That's a sign that basically the reaction's done. So I'm not going to put another batch of reactants in. I'm just going to let this thing cool down some and start the cleanup. This is what the inside of the boiling flask looks like now. I mean, there's obviously still some liquid in there that could be boiled off, but it's just coming across so slowly. If I had all afternoon, I might let it continue to run a while longer, but the thunderstorms are getting closer, so I've got the heat off, letting it start to cool down. It's going to take a while. That oil's hot. But um, with, the, with the foil off, the, the top of the flask is going to start to cool, and um, the acid will start refluxing on the flask and not going up higher, and I can eventually, it'll stop going through the condenser, and I can I can take the glassware apart and start uh, cleaning it and I'll just have to wait for the uh, boiling flask to cool off some more. Well things are slowly cooling down. Uh, the big boiling flask is full of orange sulfur, um, nitrogen dioxide fumes but things are cooling down. While we're waiting for stuff to cool down why don't we test the strength of this acid? Ooh, I don't know if can you see the fumes on camera? It's seriously fuming. So I'm wearing vinyl gloves, which stand up to nitric acid pretty darn well. But I have here a nitro glove. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the acid on this nitro glove and we'll see what happens. It's a good test of the strength of the acid. So let me get uh, some of this on a dropper, in a dropper. And we'll see what happens. I put it on this nitro glove down here. Well, I've certainly, oh, there we go. I was going to say, I've certainly seen more vigorous reactions, but there, it finally, it burst into flames. So that's some, that's some pretty strong acid. Ooh, that stinks. Okay, so that's a sufficiently strong acid. That's my test of the acid. If it'll uh, set a nitro glove aflame. It's strong acid, so I'm happy with that. So I've got like three quarters of a liter of highly concentrated red fuming nitric acid. Excellent. And if I were to dilute this down to say the 68% azeotrope, which is basically what you usually buy when you're buying concentrated nitric acid, I'd have well over a liter, like about 1.1 liters of this stuff. And so Let's see, a liter of nitric acid costs me, retail, about 90 bucks. A little under 90 bucks. 85 to 90, depending. Plus tax, plus hazmat shipping. So, you know, I think I did pretty good today. I'll try to do a cost breakdown of just how much making all this acid today cost me. Um... Probably I'll either do it at the end of the video or I will put it in the description, depending. All right, so I think this stuff has cooled down enough. Everything except the boiling flask is pretty cool. I can start disassembling it. I'm going to double glove up. So I've got the vinyl gloves on. I'm going to put leather gloves over them. So that way um, I won't be burned by acid and I won't be burned by hot glassware either. 
So that's that's my standard method of dealing with this. So I'm going to put the camera down and I'm going to concentrate fully on what I'm doing so I don't get burned either by the acid or the heat. All right, clean up. It's the most boring, tedious part of the whole process, but necessary and you got to do it right. So all the glassware went into this uh, tub with uh, water and baking soda in it. And boy, did some of it fizz when it went in. you got to be really careful when you take the glassware apart because a lot of the ground glass joints, they'll have a big puddle of acid sitting in them. And if you're not really careful when you take it apart, it's easy to splash it or drip it on you. You don't want to do that. The hard part of cleaning this up is the big boiling flask. Now this is still pretty hot. And you can see it's fuming. It's got to cool off some more. Once it does, I need to get it out of the oil bath. It's going to be slippery. It's heavy, it's awkward, and it's slippery. And it's round bottom. So it's not going to want to sit wherever you put it. It's going to want to roll. So what I'm going to do is, um, once it cools off a little more, I'll pick it up with gloved hands, because it'll probably still be pretty hot. And it'll be have acid around the, the joints there. And um, wipe as much of the oil off of it as I can with rags or paper towel. And then I need something to sit it on so it won't roll away. Well, I've got this coil of copper wire here that's hollow. So it'll sit right there and it won't roll. See, that works pretty good. And uh, what I will do is, once it's cool enough that I'm not going to get a steam eruption or worry about cracking the glass, I'm going to pour the liquid in this tub, which has a lot of baking soda in it, in here. And it will start dissolving this big slug of material in here. It uh, actually works really well, and uh, in just, you know, a few minutes it's going to start looking like Swiss cheese. It's going to dissolve holes in it, and it'll all just dissolve away after a while. There'll be much fizzing. I'll have to add the water slowly with a funnel so that it doesn't fizz out all over the place. So that's, that's how I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to give all of the glassware a final rinse with distilled water before I put it on the drying rack just so it's not all covered with water spots the next time I use it. So that's that's how I do cleanup. Oh, one more thing. Once the oil cools off, I pour it right back in the oil container. I mean, I got, got it up there. Pour it right back in there and uh, put it back on the shelf for next time. I've already used the oil, I don't know, half a dozen times. Lose a little bit each time, but, you know, a quart's going to last me years. So, alright, that's all there is to clean up. And I've got two different bottles of it here. I normally store my acid in this brown bottle because light will break down the acid or, or speed up its breakdown. So what I'll do is I'll put this back in the dark corner, deep recess in my uh, fume hood. And I will use the acid in this uh, beaker first before I start using this acid. Just so... Uh, I use it up before uh, the sunlight breaks it down. Okay, so what did it cost me to make this three quarters of a liter of highly concentrated red fuming nitric acid? And was it worth it? Well, I did a little bit of a Jethro Bodine type ciphering over here. And I came up with uh, a few numbers. Uh, for the sodium nitrate, I used $11.97 worth of sodium nitrate. Um, for the sulfuric acid, $10.23, $10.23, sorry, of sulfuric acid. And we'll throw in 50 cents worth of electricity, although I doubt I used that much. Plus there's a little bit of aluminum foil, some baking soda. Yeah, not throwing all that in. Total of $23.70 to make what would be the equivalent of a little over a liter of uh, concentrated uh, azeotropic acid if I were to buy it. So, you know, uh, the last time I priced it, it was about $89 for a liter of that. Um, and you can get cheaper in bulk, but uh, you don't need a carload of it. Um, but uh, $89 plus tax plus shipping. So we're going to be well over $100. So I made this for less than a quarter of what I could buy it for. So that's not too bad. So price-wise, hey, it's a it's a big upside for making your own acid. Downsides, well, there are a few. It takes some time, you know, 
This has taken a good part of the day, but clean, uh, set up, tear down, and clean up are pretty tedious. But, you know, the rest of the time I can multitask. Once it's up and going, I just check on it every 10, 15 minutes. And, you know, when the reaction slowed down, I'd add more reactants to it. Just swap out the bottles once and uh, just keep rolling, you know. So even though it took a fair amount of time, it wasn't wasted time because I was doing other stuff too. Um, you need some equipment. Yeah, you need a distillation setup. Uh, my very first video on making nitric acid, I talk about buying the distillation setup. It was cheap. It was less than what one liter of nitric acid would have cost me back then. Um, and I'm still using the same equipment. All I've upgraded really is my uh, boiling flask. So I got a bigger one and then I got a double necked one and really that's all I've upgraded. Uh, everything else I'm still using. The same thermometer, all of the same connectors, the same condenser, everything. So it's, it's you know, it's a one-time expense basically unless you want to upgrade some. Um, so yeah, there is some time, and ex time required and the expense of the equipment, but uh, you know, it's also kind of fun. I mean, if you're watching this channel, you probably enjoy playing with dangerous chemicals. So, you know, why not? Plus, you got the, the smug factor that goes in with, hey, I made this myself. I didn't buy it. But uh, the process could be scaled up further. You know, if you want to make a lot of acid in a shorter time or make just make a lot of acid in the same time, you could scale it up. I mean, a much bigger boiling flask. Um, if you could uh, either get a, a, a big heating mantle or a bigger oil bath or a big sand bath or whatever to heat it, you could go with a three, four, six, whatever liter boiling flask and just crank out the acid by the liter all day long if you wanted to. Uh, I don't need that much acid. So, I mean, like I said, this is going to last me for months probably. I do have a couple of projects in mind that will use a lot of acid, but most of the time I just use it for refining gold, and I don't need a whole lot for that. So, $23.70 for this much acid, I'm happy. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you found this interesting or, or helpful, you know, give the video a like. Um, Feel free to subscribe to see future videos. Uh, this acid is going to get used in some interesting stuff. You don't want to miss it. Uh, and I've got some other videos, you know, coming down the line, too. And uh, there's going to be a lot of gold recovery videos in the future. Now that I'm back in town, the videos are going to be coming fast and furious. Because uh, over the last two months, I've had lots of time to think about what I want to do. And uh, there's all kinds of videos that are coming. Anyway, thanks for watching. Keep it safe out there. And I'll see you next time. Bye.